Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to be talking about adjustment layers in Photoshop. Theme tune. Do 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 do. Rock. I've been listening to rock music lately. The horns. Whatever that means. Okay, so we're going to be talking about adjustment layers and what are they inside Photoshop. Essentially, it's like this. If you use light, if you're a photographer, you, you use Lightroom, so you make all of your adjustments. Well, essentially, they go straight on top of, a, of an image. But what you can do is go and re edit those sliders, so that's all amazing. In Photoshop, it works slightly different. You can create multiple layers of these adjustments and go in and change individual layers. It's kind of like the sections in Lightroom. But you can turn them on and off, you can change their opacity, their blend modes all sorts of amazing things. Essentially, they're amazing for photographers and for just your creative projects. So let's jump into Photoshop and let me walk you through this. So this, this is part of my Photoshop training course. Head over to photosincolor.com to get this file and all the other ones. So, adjustment layers can be found on the right-hand panel here. If you don't see that, rock and roll gets you out of breath, huh? If you don't see that, you just go into window and then you'll just have to select it up here, adjustments, and it will bring up this. Now, another way to select adjustment layers is down at the very bottom here, you've got a little circle with a line through it, and that's down here as well. So, let's have a look at this image today and let's actually add some adjustment layers. So the first thing we're going to do is, up here, is brightness and contrast. Click on that and watch, we get a brand new adjustment layer on top of this one. So for example, this image, I'm gonna pull down the brightness a little bit, okay, and boost the contrast, for example. So that's what this is. Now I'm gonna be doing tutorials on each one of these individually, so stay tuned and watch all of those videos too. This is just an overview today. So we can see what we've done there. Now let's close that and look at this down here. I now have this on its own layer that I can turn on and off. So now let's add another adjustment layer so I can show you how this works. The next one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer. Now, inside this, the first thing I'm going to do is set my white balance. To do this, I'm gonna use this eyedropper in the middle here, and then I'm gonna select on something. So if I was to select, say, on the boat, it's made it really cold, that isn't very accurate. So instead, I'm gonna choose something like here. Mm, I don't like that either. Oh, there you go, that's warmed it up slightly. And you can see what it's done. Inside my RGB, it's actually moved all of my curves around and it's created this beautiful effect. So now let's see. Okay, that's what that layer did. And I can turn off the brightness. So to turn off all of them and just go back to the background layer, I just hit option and click the background eye and it goes back to the beginning. And it hides all the other layers. So you can see a massive adjustment already. Now let's keep going with this because I want to show you lots of different elements. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into color balance. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to switch things up a little bit just to show you this. So inside midtones, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some magenta to my midtones. Oh, I like that a lot actually. I'm also going to add a little yellow to this to warm it up. Now this looks fantastic. Now let's go to my shadows and for my shadows I'm going to add some blue. Just a little bit there, okay? Let's say we're done with that one. So now you can see the difference here. With all three of these layers, we've created this, but now I can turn on just my color balance, or just my curves, or just my brightness and contrast, or all three. So now we're starting to get somewhere. Now let's keep on going with this. Now what I'm going to do is go for a selective color layer. See, I've now got four layers on top of each other, and I'm gonna edit just the sky. So the skies, sit with, within the cyans and the blues. So for example, inside this, I'm gonna pull my black point up, so it's gonna darken the cyans, and I'm gonna do the same thing inside the blues. Great, so then it's done all of that, and I really like what it's done. Quite extreme though, so let's push this too far actually. So we'll go all the way up there, and we've added some magenta in there too. Now for example, maybe I go, well, I like it, but it's too much. Well, what I can do is I can change the opacity of just that adjustment layer. So it hasn't affected any of the other ones, it's only that adjustment layer, which makes the adjustment layers massively powerful. So say 
okay, I like where I've got to this, but now I want to warm this whole thing up. Well, I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna choose photo filter, and I'm gonna add this on top, and now it's on a warming filter, 85, so I can go through and select my predefined ones, but also what I can do is select a specific color, and this is massively powerful. So I can go through and go, you know what? You could, for example, add a pink one over the top of that. And if I was to boost the density, you can see what it's going to do. Now, you've got preserve luminosity. That means basically allow the highlights to save the highlights and the shadows the shadows. If I get rid of that, you see it darkens the whole image. So I'm not going to use purple. <laughs> I'm going to use, say, an orange. So I'm going to nice and warm this up like so. And I'm going to pull my density around here. Now, I think that's great. Now let's look at the before and the after. Okay, option, click on the background. We can see how far we've gone just by adding all of these. Now let's try something a little bit more extreme. I want to push this and show you what else you can potentially do. So we're gonna go back into the color balance and let's do something a little bit crazy. So let's bring these cyans down away from the reds in the midtones and let's boost the blues. Okay, so say we do this and we go, well, I like it, but I only want that effect to be in the sky. Well, the amazing thing is I have adjustment, on uh, my adjustment layers, I have a layer mask. So now, let's go over and select the gradient filter, okay, and I'm gonna make sure it's selected on this one. I'm gonna hold down shift, and I'm gonna drag down here. And what that's done, if I was to hold option and click on my gradient mask, I can see what this mask is. Now, anywhere black it's not shown, anything white it is shown. So, you can see that I've got it on the boats, but not on the sky, I want it the other way. Well, that's easy. Command-I inverts it. And so now I've got that effect on the top, but not on the bottom. And you can see that's only affecting the sky. Now, I'm gonna delete that, because I don't like it. And that's the beauty. Now, I can delete that layer, ah, but I haven't deleted anything else, which is great. In fact, let's bring it back, Command-Z, and I've put this layer back and I can change my blend mode. Now I'm also gonna have a tutorial all about blend mode, so be, be sure to watch that one. And I can flick through here and go, well, you know what, I like it, but only in overlay mode. So I can see, okay, that really makes that sky pop now. I'm gonna pull it back just a little bit. Now, I've got all of these layers, so I could flatten all of these down, or command click across all of them, and then I'm gonna hit command G to group this. And now what I can do is just turn that entire group on or off, which is hugely powerful. So let me show you one more adjustment layer just to show you what you can do. And that I'm gonna click black and white. And that's this adjustment layer here. It's added it onto the top. And now I can change things around. So I'm gonna bring up my yellows. I'm gonna pull back my blues like this, my magentas, I'm gonna lift those. And my reds, I'm gonna lift it. Okay, so this is now a nice black and white image. But check this out because this is over to the top of all of it, including my adjustment layers. But what I can do is turn off my adjustment layers, and now it's only affecting the very bottom layer, because I've turned off these adjustment layers. And also what I can do is I can put these adjustment layers above it. So now what you can see is anywhere that I've actually changed the color, like the photo filter, and like the selective color, no, sorry, the color balance, where I've actually used that to add in some color, you see what it actually did was create a cast over there. So by changing the order of the layers and using the adjustment layers, you can get incredibly creative with your photographs. Okay, so that is a brief overview of how adjustment layers work and how they interact with each other. Massively powerful. Remember, they're non-destructive. They're not affecting your image. Now, my next set of videos are gonna explain all of those individually and what each one does in detail. So be sure to watch all of those. Anyway, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel because I've got loads more videos coming in the future. Thank you so much. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune. I don't know why I do that.